Hello and welcome to the ChessCreator.com YouTube video channel. In today's video I'd like to go through some of the themes of the Dutch Stonewall defence and in particular uh, just run through a different move order which I find beneficial. If you've seen any of my previous videos you'll know that one F5 by black can provoke quite a lot of dangerous responses including Bishop G5, the Staunton Gambit and other quite dangerous gambits. The way that I play the Dutch is actually to delay F5 until it's clear what black is doing. The advantage of this is it avoids some of those dangerous lines, the anti-Dutch lines and the gambits. The disadvantage is clearly white has three, four, five or even six moves to determine its strategy and can obviously play moves that actually prevent the Dutch being reached at all. Anyway, this game was um, a miniature um, over quite quickly and it probably represents an absolutely clinical example of the Stonewall system with a delayed F5. So, white began D4 and I responded d5 waiting to see which of the Queen's pawns opening white was going to adopt. Knight f3 c6 and as you can see here I'm starting to put my pawns on c6 d5 and e6 which is a common theme in the Stonewall and also the Slav and Semi-Slav defences. These pawn triangles are very very solid. At the moment I'm still not sure what white is playing for so the game continues. e6. Now at this point it's clear that he's not playing the Queen's Gambit, he's not playing the London system with the bishop out on f4 um, and it looks like one of the maybe the collie system with bishop to d3 or basically just some generic opening that happens to start with uh, d4. So I continue with my plan to build the pawn triangle and once again wait for white's next move which is uh, bishop to e2 and um, at this point we can see white hasn't really done anything wrong um, but his pieces are relatively passive um, they're all kind of still in his own half of the board and um, there's no real pressure. So I continue with a slightly more aggressive move here bishop d6 and again this is a thematic position for the bishop in the modern stone wall where the bishop bears down on h2 and we'll see the impact of that later in the game. White now strikes out at the center with c4 and here is where I complete the stonewall formation with f5 and this is the formation that people talk about when they refer to the stonewall and it basically has the pawns on c6, d5, e6 and f5 and this makes a very uh, difficult pawn structure for white to break through and also provides a natural outpost for the for the black pieces, uh, predominantly a knight going from g8 to f6 to e5. The disadvantages are a weak backward pawn on e6 which can be a target and also there is a hole here on e5 which um, sometimes white can exploit by popping his knight in there and again causing pressure. So in this game the game continues with c5 and um, for some reason when I play the stonewall people love to do this move uh, I'm not sure why because it um, doesn't impact me I just drop the bishop back I assume they think they're preventing uh, bishop b4 check um, which is not something that I'm aiming for so the game continues knight c3 knight d7 and at this point I'm now 
making it more difficult for the white pieces to develop. I have uh, two pieces attacking the knight here. Um, should it should it decide to move to e5? Again, notice that white really hasn't done anything incorrectly here. Castles. Knight f6. B4. Again, white continues to try and clamp down on the queen side, um, perhaps hoping to stop me developing pieces over here. Um, but again, that's not really part of my initial stonewall plan. And I continue with castle. A4. Knight E4. And this is a very thematic move in the Dutch stonewall. Basically, if white captures this piece um, with the knight, a recapture with the f pawn, and drive this knight away from protecting the h2 square, and that's a common theme. The next common theme looks a very unusual move. After white plays queen c2, again trying to pressurize this knight, but that's not really a problem. It's protected by two pawns, it's not um, under any threat whatsoever. I play f6, and this looks rather odd, um, but what it facilitates is swinging the rook across from f8 to f6 to h6, and at that point it will team up with the bishop and they'll both point at h2 and again notice the queen is on a diagonal where it can come into h4 and join the attack the only piece that's defending that is the knight and as I mentioned um, commonly that can be driven away if white seeks to capture this piece so in this game white continued with bishop b2 again no, white really hasn't done anything incorrectly at all. And I swing the, knight, the rook across. Now I've had this position many, many times, and probably 80% of the time, white looks at the board and thinks, well, I have my knight protecting here, so I have two pieces protecting, and there are only two pieces attacking, so I'm going to completely ignore the threat. Um, this is where a thematic bishop sacrifice comes in and it's um, quite good fun to play. After white's next move we see bishop takes h2 and when white recaptures the queen comes in but h4 and at this point black resigns there is to be honest nothing that can be done to prevent mate at this point um, if white attempts to move the knight out of the way it's just checkmate with queen h1 um, and the knight here uh, really um, protects this square white can move the uh, the rook out the way but there isn't enough time to prevent the queen coming in gobbling up the knight and then delivering uh, a series of checks and pretty much it's game over so this gives you an example of the stonewall defense and also playing it with a deferred or a delayed f5 which i personally think um, is a safer way to play so if you're a Dutch player yourself and you played a stone wall um, or if you're someone that plays against the stone wall I hope this video has been useful and I hope it increases your chess ratings as usual comments or questions on YouTube thanks very much